Hello, welcome to Pepper's Echo, and yes, it is a live one for a change, not pre-recorded. And it was a quick live one because I was on the verge of actually not doing anything tonight due to the fact that my lovely wife, Inna, has had her birthday today. So, first of all, I would love to wish my wife, Inna, a very, very, very happy birthday. We've been married 22 years and she looks 22 years old, so I am very blessed to have a wife like that. And I am so chuffed to be able to say that it is her birthday today. Happy birthday, my dearie. May you be spared for many, 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 many more happy years ahead. Thank you very, very much for all the time and all the good times that you have had on for me. But uh, yes, on with this show. Uh, Oh, my goodness me, Coral. <laughs> Didn't think you'd catch me live on this one. So happy birthday, Dina. I can't believe that she held out with you so long. <laughs> of course, I'm a nice guy. I'm a really nice guy. DVD, Div Diva, happy birthday, Ina. Beautiful. Thanks, guys. And I'm sure Ina says thank you very, very much, too. So that's why I'm almost like, ooh, I don't know if I'm really, really on the time or on the spot. Um, I'm not going to be too long tonight because obviously my tensions have to be elsewhere. Um, but yes, yeah, so I nearly put up a little poster saying no echo tonight because the wife's birthday, but I figured we could probably squeeze it in and she was kind enough to make me a cup of coffee for the echo as well, even on her birthday. And uh Yes, uh, I didn't do anything last weekend. Last weekend, I was feeling, uh, let's say I wasn't in the greatest of places, which brings me to a couple of thoughts that I had been spending and something that I'd been looking at this weekend as such. I haven't looked at the news very much. I've looked at, oh, man, vaccination station, what the vax is going on, but yeah. Uh, one, one, one chap is saying, yeah, no, well, you don't want the nappy on the face because uh, you can't breathe because it's got carbon dioxide coming in. But uh, a couple of weeks before he was going, well, it doesn't keep anything in. So what's the use of it? So I just want to know if you can actually make the decision. Does it actually keep in or does it not keep anything in? Because it, which part is the bad part? The part that nothing can come out or the part that nothing can go in or, or in or out or whatever but but somehow you've got to make a decision yeah um but yeah he seems to have gone over to doomsday prepping as well it's been quite a uh oh you know what the the stories uh we i do believe that south africa was supposed to have had a total blackout by the end of last year and it hasn't yet and i i, I don't believe south africa will i think there's enough uh goodness in south africa still to uh bring that country up and around although i do favor the uh the rand dollar being a little bit low so i figured my next leave session that i'm going to take um i'm going to take over the voting period because if i take my dollars and i go to south africa and the rand is like shot to hell uh it's really good for me so when I go down to South Africa again, I'm going to take leave period over voting period. I'm going to go vote ANC so that my dollars still make more money in South Africa. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but it's a good thought, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I won't leave you there. Anyway, if you'd like to uh, suggest any subjects to, to, uh, to chat about on... Uh, Pepper's Echo, uh, if you'd like anything to go live, if you'd like to chat live, I really, I actually, the last day of this or the last Sunday of this month or the first Sunday of March, I haven't quite spoken to Coral and I know he's online at the moment, so I'm sort of hint, hint, indirectly throwing it his way, is uh, I'd like to have Pastor Coral on. What I would like you guys to do is send me questions or subjects that you would really like us to discuss. I know Coral has a uh, a theme in mind and something that he has been wanting to put out online for many uh, many a time, and and I haven't got back and spoken to him about it properly yet. 
but I know the theme and, and the suffering theme, etc. But if there is anything, I, uh, my wife and I are, are going through um, uh, some some beautiful uh, little uh, devotional things uh, on the uh, phones. You get this i version Bible, and there's some good devotionals, and some are just set up to to sell things. But but otherwise, there's some nice ones, and then there's a Another little program on uh, iPhone, uh, no, well, not iPhone, on Android called TT, TTW, Through the Word. Also very, very nice. Got actually four sections on marriage as well. Pretty cool. Uh, I, I did vastly disagree with the chap at one stage. But, uh, yeah, there we go. Coral's giving a thumbs up as well. So, guys, if you're watching this live, if you're watching this on a re rerun, please drop us a, uh, a mail or a uh, comment, uh, you can drop me a mail at Peppers Echo, P E P R S E C H O at gmail.com. And uh, yes, I'd like to, to, to pass this on so that we can actually have a live discussion with Pastor Coral, uh, who's actually pretty young, pretty dynamic. Uh, I know he's a very, very open minded chap, but he is not watered down because if something irritates me, and I know it irritates him hectically, is the watering down that church has been doing these days. Hence the reason I'd just like to straighten something. I mean, I had someone walk in at work after a week before last uh, um, post uh, where I said, uh, stop trying to be a Christian. And she walked in with these big eyes and she's like, I thought you were. And I said, yes, I am a Christian, but understand Stop trying to cover the book if it's not going to read the right words inside. That's what I'm trying to say. So let me first just actually clear any thoughts. I am a Christian. I just wanted that shot to go out there to say to you, stop putting the plastic on and start playing the music. That's the bottom line. So without ado, I don't want to go on too long. As I said, Inna's birthday is here, so I would like to uh, uh, finish up rather earlier this evening but yeah please like and subscribe uh tell your friends about us uh, i will try and keep it interesting drop us any uh, ideas that you may have if you have suggestions if you'd like to come on the show please do it's pepper's echo the ordinary man in the street we don't have some hobnob snob nose whatever you're uh, you're welcome and if you don't feel like coming on the show just drop us a mail you're watching the live echo right now, and my name's Andre. You can mail me at p e p r s e c h o at gmail.com. Just make sure it's p e p r s c e c h o. Okay, so what my wife and I are doing, other than the fact that we've actually been doing these like nice little devotionals in the evening, um, which uh, I may add is the easiest when you've finished eating supper. Do yourself a favor, get your ass to the table. And sit down with your wife, even if it's just you and your wife, you and your wife and a child or whatever. Get your bum to a table. You'll be amazed what you learn about each other when you start chatting to each other. Before you finish, pull out. If you don't have a Bible lying around, you know what? Go knock on a Christian's door. I'm sure they'll have one. But anyway, otherwise, you can pull out your cell phone. iVersion is a good little thing to look at. But TTW, it's called Through the Word. Uh, also, some excellent, excellent little uh, devotional things that you can go on. Not long. Do one after supper. You'll feel much, much better. There's three things that I've got going in my life this year that I would really, really recommend. A is I, uh, towards the end of last year, started getting to gym every day after work, and that worked for me. And the first thing I did is I didn't come home. I went there first, which means you know, stepping through home is just like my butt hits the ground. Boom. I'm not even going to change. So I've been going to gym uh, after work. I, we have been sitting down at a table and having supper. And well, during the week, weekends are still toughy. And uh, we have been doing a devotional together, which is uh, at first strange. If you if you don't like it, it's, it's okay. It's strange. Just listen to it and then wander away and think about it. Um, it becomes easier. Trust me. Uh, and then it's quite cool. And then you learn to disagree sometimes with points and you learn to discuss points, which uh, brings the third thing up. You need to uh, start learning to talk, converse. Now I can try and create little banners here. 
but I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to try and create patterns, really, really try, trying to type. So you're just going to listen to me. Something else my wife and I have done is we started watching Kitchen Nightmares. Now, everybody loves Gordon Ramsay. Everybody loves Gordon Ramsay. And I think you can learn things from Kitchen Nightmares and different things. And it's one way of learning to, to sort out your restaurant. Uh, but he does more than sort out restaurants. He often sorts out lives. He sorts out relationships. And yes, it's a big TV um, hype, if you want to put it that way. Let me get my hands out here. Hype. Yeah. And, and all that wonderful stuff. And you learn things. You learn good things. You learn bad things. I mean, I learned to say, fuck me. But anyway, sorry. Uh, that was Gordon's fault. But uh, then you take a look. We've been watching Kitchen Nightmares for, oh, we've just been sort of, how should I say, sponging, uh, whinging away on them, uh, binging away on them. So I'm going to get these out here so that I can actually see them without looking to the side every time I am, every time I am trying to talk to you, then I'm like, hmm. And I have keywords, so yeah, I didn't, I didn't script tonight. I'm sorry, I just didn't have the time to script or anything to that effect. But what happens is, watch Gordon Ramsay's nightmares and how he turns kitchens around. And yes, you can get tired of it and all that wonderful stuff. But the bottom line, you always tend to learn something from it, or it has a certain way of working. Let, let me, let me, let me put it this way: it has a certain way of working. What happens is, first of all. He goes in, okay? Definitely, he goes in. Hello, Buzzies Moments. So lovely to see you. Guys, just while I'm actually on the line of Buzzies Moments, before I carry on with, with the Kitchen Nightmares, Buzzies Moments has an excellent, excellent course going online, uh, advertising excellent course. Please tune in to... Uh, uh, Buzzy's moments and take a look at it. I have a little bit of a hassle on, on timelines on my side at the moment. Waking up at one o'clock is not my favorite, but uh, I've taken a look at the, the adverts on it and the, the, the free pieces that have been put through. Um, wow. Wow is all I can say. Be careful for being, I should I say, uh, penny wise, pound foolish. It, it, it's, you know what? You, you, you will pay for it, but you are going to reap benefits from, from it. But back to Kitchen Nightmares again. So Gordon goes in and basically goes into a broken restaurant. How many times are the family broken? Because so, uh, so many times it's a broken family, husband and wife, husband and wife and child, and you name it, their families are broken. And I take it and I, and I looked at it and I thought, you know what? How many times do our lives, are our lives broken? We walk into a broken, or we walking along with broken lives between our families, between a husband and wife, between children, between, you, you know, it, you know, um, how many times are we just trying to make ends meet and we're having to pay in at the end of every, every month. We pay in at the end of every month. We pay in at the end of every month. And these are what these restaurants are doing and they're not getting enough people and they're not getting enough bums in seats, etc., etc. Cameron, how's it going, Cameron? <laughs> Good to see you. Wow, I've got a lot of people on live tonight. <laughs> I'm impressed. Thank you so very, very much. I really appreciate it. Okay, so, and I took a look at it and I thought to myself, well, you know what, my life. Let's take a look at lives, but, but I take a look at my life. And once again, I am by no means the perfect example of life. I struggle as much as anybody else does. I have down days, as I said, even last weekend, was an absolute downer. I didn't have a sore stomach. I didn't have a sore throat. I was just having a very, very dark day as such. Although I must say, Pastor Coral, I did enjoy your church service last weekend extensively. Uh, and if you didn't, you can go on to Bethel Live Broadcasting, Bethel uh, Love Price CAC. And it is Varus de Yira. Where is God? Often when you're looking for him. And that, that was a really, really good one. To, to go through. Right, so uh, let's take a look. So Gordon goes in, often to broken families, and he has our lives. Our lives are often like these broken families. He tastes the food. He goes and tastes the food. It's usually the first thing he does, sit down, he says, bring me this, bring me this, bring me this, bring me this, let me taste it. And it's usually, this is undercooked, this is frozen, 
This is just like quickly jammed out of the microwave. What is Gordon's usual um, finding? Nothing is fresh. Nothing is fresh. He usually finds out nothing is fresh. Then he checks the attitude of the owners or the people. Oh, you are, are you prepared to change? Well, you know, what's wrong with my food? I have been doing this for my people love it. Uh, yeah, yeah, obviously they love it. You can see who comes into your restaurant. And then he checks cleanliness in the kitchen usually. How clean are you keeping your kitchen? You know what? What's behind the stove? Uh, you know what? What's the health risk for the people around you? How healthy is your life for those around you? And then he checks the freezer. And that's when he finds years and years or months and months or days or weeks or whatever is old frozen food that he has to throw out because you can't serve non-fresh food. It's got to be fresh. So he will throw out all the old food and say, hey, <laughs> This is to be fresh. Then he looks at willingness to change. You know what? Have you got attitude? Yes, what we've got to change. We've got to change your menu. You've got too much on your menu. You need to change. You need to make the menu smaller and better. How willing are you, Mr. Owner, to change? And then he usually, his team goes in at night and redoes the 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 the, the Restaurant to look like, oh, beautiful and uh, stunning. And it's like everyone comes in with blindfolds the next day and like, oh, I can't believe it. And the tears are running down. Oh, thank you. And it's like he's redone this thing. <coughs> then he makes sure that the owner is in charge of his restaurant and not just a worker. You know? Also, while he's doing that, sometimes they need to let go of some stuff that are pulling them down. Then they start off their, their first launch with their new menu and everything. And not everything goes well always. There are hiccups. But the first launch, he'll accept with hiccups. And he like... Checks, whoops, we've got to fix there. No, no, don't lose, don't lose your focus now. And whammo, we stay in control. And what he does is in the end, he gets everyone together. He says, well done. We might have, we started strong. We might have dwindled there, but we finished great. <coughs> well done. He celebrates and recognizes achievements, even small ones. He then leaves with a promise that the owner will stay changed and to keep that restaurant running that way. And the success remains with those who accept and implement and embrace the new change, even when there are a few bumps in the road. Now let's swing that restaurant around to us, your life, me, Andre, Pity, Sonny, Yanni, whoever, your life, for this year, do we need to send Gordon in? No. If you're a believer, I'd say send God in. But if you aren't, send whoever you feel you need to send in. But uh, take a look for yourself. Send yourself in. You don't need Gordon Ramsay to go into your life. Taste your food. Oh, well, I scramble eggs lacquer in the morning and I make lacquer pasta in the evening and you should taste my Buddha Vosh on the grill. No, we're not talking about your food. We're talking about what do you feed the people around you? Do you feed gossip? Do you feed lies? Do you feed manipulation? Do you feed joy? Do you feed happiness? Do you feed encouragement? Do you feed upliftment? What do you feed the people around you? What do you feed people that come to Andre, that come to Pitt, that come to Jan, Sun, whoever? What do you feed to those who come to you? That's the first thing you got to do. The Gordon Ramsay, Kitchen Nightmares. I hope I don't get nailed for my background, but 
He goes into that kitchen. The first thing he does is taste that food. So the first thing you do is, what am I feeding the people around me? What am I feeding? I'm guilty of feeding the people around me a bunch of rubbish. I've done it over and over and over. And I'll tell you, this week I've slipped up so many times, it's just not funny. I'm aware of it, and I'm trying to work very, very hard at it. You know what? Sometimes you'll feed someone something that will bring somebody else down. You know that little gossip, that little jab in the side. You know, it's, it really happens, so I can tell them. But it's actually not necessary. What do you feed the people around you? Are you feeding them upliftment or are you feeding them destruction? Are you feeding them uh, motivation or are you demotivating people? Are you breaking them down or are you building them up? What food comes from you? So taste your food first. Check your attitude is the next one. Check that attitude. Yay, Bruce. There's nothing better than me. Everything else is not my fault. I'm not prepared to take responsibility for this. Check your attitude. So Gordon goes in. So you go in, taste your food, and check your attitude. Are you taking responsibility for your restaurant, you, your body, your attitude? How are you coming across? Are you blaming everybody? Are you taking responsibility? Are you wanting to change is the next thing. I've been to gym for three months. It took me one year to get it up here. Are you wanting to? Because if you don't want to, forget about worrying about what food you serve because you're going to be serving that food forever. So make sure that your attitude is right. Are you wanting to change? Are you wanting to be the person that you are needing to be? Then let's check cleanliness because now we've got to check the kitchen out. Now we're into our kitchen. <laughs> into our kitchen. I really, you know what? I, I've hoped that I probably in the army could have got one of those little iron plates in my head so that maybe it would have stopped the Lord from seeing into my head because sometimes my kitchen is far from clean. I will be sitting outside having coffee with the guys and I think, well, I can actually entertain them with, with, with this joke. And then I think, oh my goodness me. Do you know what you were going to say? And there's ladies around. Well, maybe if the ladies aren't around and you think, yes. You know, it's the same on Facebook and on instant messaging and everything. And everybody says it. And I hate this little cliche. So I actually don't want to say it to you. You often send a joke around, but you don't want to send anything about Jesus around. You know what? I don't mind if you do, if you don't, or whatever. That, that's your problem. But it's, it's the people that are coming to your restaurant or whatever. They come to you. They hear what you talk about. Are you talking sense? Are you talking uh, motivationally? Are you talking upliftment? Or are you talking dirty? How dirty is your kitchen? Is it filthy? Is it filled with uh, bad thoughts, manipulation? Do you want to uh, get back at someone? Do you have resentment? Do you have... Whatever you have in somebody, you, you know, do you want to get that, get back at them? Or, or, or are you pretty clean? Are you actually trying to clean out, keep out the cockroaches? You know what? Keep a clean mind. Keep a clean thought. You know what? Are my thoughts clean? You know what? Am I, are my thoughts loyal? Are my thoughts uplifting? Are my thoughts um to myself, How, what are my thoughts like to myself? Because now I can talk about everybody else, but what are my thoughts like to myself? Be careful that you're not beating yourself with dirt all the time. Oh, Andre, you guys did that woman. You filthy, filthy. And no, you know what? It's just like, okay, look that way. Or uh, what? whatever you did. You know, you might have done something wrong. You might as well had a... Uh, 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 a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but clean out. It's okay. Everybody has cobwebs in their cupboard, but be willing to. And then the next thing is he goes into the freezer. Now, what does a freezer do? It keeps things, old things. In the Afrikaans word, it goes, and 
for the English people, old cows in the in the sloot or the whole. I don't know how to speak that in English, but you, it holds the past, your your frozen things, that resentment that I can't get rid of, that forgiveness that I can't or unforgiveness that I can't throw out, that that hatred, that 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 hurt, that pain, that. There are there, there's so many different things that I can tell you that that you freeze, that you keep in your freezer, that you can't serve to people anymore because it doesn't matter to them anymore, but it is stuck in your freezer. And you're holding on to the past so much. Thanks, Cameron. Old cows in a ditch. Appreciate it. And you're holding on to that past so much because you're holding on to the time that happened to you, the time you hurt somebody. So you're holding on to guilt. Be careful. I'm not saying you're holding on to anything that you've done badly always, but maybe it's something that was done badly to you. There's different things. You can be holding on to guilt. You can be holding on to anger. You can be holding on to unforgiveness. You can be holding on to resentment. You can be holding on to... Uh, Anger, uh, uh, missing someone, mourning people. Uh, you know what? These people, you, you will never get over that missing of somebody. Um, so it, it, it is amazing that uh, um, people take all of this and they put it in their freezer and they store it because you can keep it in the freezer and it becomes moldy and it festers. And this is inside you. Your restaurant is festering with guilt, with resentment, with anger, with all of this. And this is what he usually goes and he pulls the stuff out of the fridge and he goes, why you can't keep this? And I don't want to use the fruitful words that I've learned from what he says when you pull them out there. But he starts pulling it out of the freezer. You've got to be fresh. It's a new you. Every morning you wake up with a new God-given day. It's fresh. You pick fresh foods. You pick fresh words. You pick fresh thoughts. You pick fresh attitudes. Yesterday cannot be frozen. The day before you cannot freeze. You can't freeze last week, last month, last year. I used to freeze the things from a few years back. Things that could make you feel inadequate. Things that could make you feel your confidence go. Things that would make you feel guilty. Things that you resent. People that you, I should I coulda, I woulda, why didn't you, if only. Stop freezing that. Decisions that you made that weren't right, but you've frozen it. Clean out your freezer. Keep your kitchen fresh. Now that we know our food is not up to scratch, we know that our attitude is that we want to change. We know that we try and keep our kitchen clean, or we're going to keep our kitchen clean. And we know that <laughs> my parents have stuff in the deep freeze that have been longer than nine years. <laughs> I, I, I hope it's in the physical deep freeze, and I hope you quietly remove it one day, unless it's that could do bourrevors that your dad still wants to bry one day. Don't do that. I threw somebody's bourrevors away after they kept it in the freezer for a year. <laughs> uh, but yes, but I'm talking about inside you, your deep freeze. But you check my food. It's not that great. I got to work on that food. My attitude. Yes. Do I want to change? Yes. And then I need to check. Am I clean? Clean out. Clean out in the cracks. Clean out in my mind. My my subconscious, my thoughts, my grudges that I'm holding on to, my heart, my feeling, my emotion. I need to clean. I need to clean. I want to be a clean person. Go into my freezer and see what I've been storing up there for days, months, years. And throw out what I've frozen inside of me. And then I've got to check my willingness. Right. So, Andre, we found your food's not cool, your attitude you want to change, you need to do some cleaning. We've thrown out the freezer. Are you willing to change? Because sometimes it's not easy because we hold on to who we are because that's how we are. You know what? Those, those Facebook cliches, that since I stopped giving a F, uh, nothing really matters and my life's not better. Remember, 
you can only hurt a man so many times before he'll hurt you back. And you only see my good side because you're good to me. You don't want to see my bad. Forget about that crap. Really, forget about that crap. It's a willingness to change. Basically, have I been doing the wrong thing? Where have I been going? Let me take a look at these little things. My food, my attitude, my cleanliness, and, and my freezer. Am I willing to change? So, yeah, my attitude is I want to change. So, am I willing to change? Because there's a difference between wanting to change and willing to change. Wanting to change means, no, I need to change. Willing to change means I'm willing to make that change. So, if I'm willing to make that change, what does Gordon Ramsay do that evening? We don't wait a week. We don't wait a month. And he says, listen, in a year's time, we're going to get this restaurant of yours looking really cool. Now, overnight, he gets everybody in. And they paint. And they picture. And they, they redo that. He has a new stove for you over there. And check these tables. And gone are the old curtains. And whammo, in are the new tablecloths and the chairs. And, and that restaurant suddenly looks <laughs> super cool. So what I'm trying to say to you is, this doesn't need to take you, I'm going to change in a few months. Uh, give me a year. Uh, you know, uh, maybe a couple of days I'll start working on this. Uh, no. Overnight, you can wake up tomorrow and see the new you. You have changed the way you see things. You have changed the way you think about things. You now see a new restaurant. You see new wallpaper. You see things differently. Remember what I used to say. Um, if you take a look and you're looking for brown spots, brown spots, brown spots. You look somewhere and you say brown spots and you look away and you say, right, can you tell me where were all the yellow or the green spots? And you say, oh, didn't you say brown spots? Because you were so busy looking at the brown spots that you couldn't see the green or the yellow spots. So now you wake up overnight, do that little restaurant thing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Shave, make yourself look better, give yourself a little brush your teeth for a change, etc. Get yourself in the mood. If You know, when I'm not feeling too cool, I go and shower and I scrub everything. And I mean everything. So, you know, you come out and then you dry up and you like deodorize and everything. And the wife says, whoa, where are we going this evening? And I say, to bed. But yeah, <laughs> it's just you suddenly feel a hang of a lot better. So change yourself overnight. If you need to change your look, change your look. If you need to change your mind, change your mind. Change your attitude, change your attitude. But you do it a quick overnight overhaul. It's not going to change your whole restaurant immediately, but it's going to give you the start that you need. So that's the start he gives you. He does it. He does the relook overnight. You've seen uh, Kitchen Nightmares. does it overnight. So then what does he do? He goes to the owner and says, right, stop trying to be a worker. Stop trying to be a bully. Stop trying to be a dictator. Be a leader. Become in charge. Make sure you are in charge of your restaurant. So we can be a bully to ourselves. Sometimes when we do something wrong, you flog yourself to pieces. When you do something uh, that you regret, you, you make a wrong decision, you spend so long regretting or flogging yourself or feeling guilty about something. So be careful about being bad to you. Be careful about how are you treating the people who are actually trying to build you, the people around you, the people who are your friends, the people who are there for you? Take a look. Take a look at your attitude in general. Are you in charge of your life or is it flying off the hammer because you're not making decisions for you because you're not prepared to accept responsibility? Because that's a problem. Anywhere in life, it doesn't matter where, you are going to have to accept responsibility for the decisions you make in your life. You are not going to go into life and go, you know, I'm a nice person, so I'm really not going to make any big decisions. You're not in charge of your kitchen then. You're not in charge of your restaurant. You need to make a charge of your life. And then you run along with it. Once you can actually treat the people around you 
and yourself decently, motivatingly, upliftingly, and you've got an idea, I need to work hard at it. That's the next thing that those people learn is it doesn't just, oh, it's easy, lie down, have a marshmallow and watch your business work. No, they've got to work hard. They've got to stand there and read tickets or they've got to be in the kitchen. They've got to talk to each other. Communication, communication, something amazing. Sometimes you've got to say sorry to someone. Sometimes you've got to say thank you to someone. Sometimes you've got to say stop it to somebody. And sometimes you need to let go of staff that pull you down. Sometimes you need to distance yourself from people that are pulling you down. Sometimes you need to distance yourself from people that are not healthy for you. Sometimes you need to distance yourself from people that... Um, are not building you up. Also make sure that you're not one of those people that need to be distanced from. But you need to sometimes take a look because the cleanliness that we need to be keeping is sometimes affected by the person in my head that is dirty because I'm with this person. Now I'm not saying, you know what, only go to church and you'll only be friends with Christians because obviously uh, dirty cars aren't cleaned at the exit of a car wash. But I'm talking about people with attitude. If somebody is bringing you down, if someone is bullying, belittling, if you are bullying or belittling yourself, drop that attitude. If somebody is gossiping and gossiping and gossiping, if somebody is just making your life miserable and complaint, sometimes you need to distance yourself. If you don't need to cut off the person, you can say to the person, look, I'm happy to talk to you, but I'm not happy to sit and gossip about everybody with you. Please, I'm your friend and I'm here to listen and help or move away. There's people that I've needed to move away from. There's people that I've had to say sometimes hard things that I almost regret or beat myself up about. There's sometimes things that I should have said that I didn't that have affected me negatively by people that have pulled me down. Um, guys, it's, it's just one of those things. In life, you need to let go of people sometimes that are pulling you down. And if you take a look, as soon as they've got their, as soon as he's got the owners in charge, he's like, you know what, now you've got to take charge. You've got to decide who you're keeping in your kitchen. Who are you keeping in your heart? Who are you keeping in your mind? Your choice. But remember, the functioning of your kitchen depends on who you keep and what you let go of. And also how you treat what you keep. Sometimes you, you can't let go of somebody who's got your back. If your attitude has changed, you will know who's got your back. And then what happens is he observes the first um, dinner service with a new menu because he changes the menu. Obviously, you've got to change your menu. Some things are taken off the menu because we go like 125 things in our life that have to get done. And this must be done. You know what? Oh, I need to be interested in history. I need to be interested in cars. I need to be interested in guns. I need to be interested in ooh, maths. I need to be interested in ooh, photography. I need to, oh, these people are learned in that. These people are learned in that. This is that. Oh, I need to do this. I need to be this. No, you do not need to be a million and 50 people. You need to be you. You might not be interested in fishing. Bugger it. There's 20 people who can tell you all kinds of things, the fishing rods, the lines, and another. Somebody might have cars and four by fours. You know, I did not be interested in that. Motorcycles, cooking, reading, be you. Throw out the menus. You're not going to learn everything. Learn what you're interested in. If you're interested in one thing, go for it. Put your heart and soul into it. But you can't carry and juggle everything and then expect your life to be fine because you are too busy trying to juggle a million things. There are certain things that need to take priority and be important in your life. Your menu needs to be small and to be able to cope with your kitchen. 
And you yourself know how much you can cope with. If you feel that your kitchen is small, don't put 100 items in your kitchen. Put 25 in your kitchen. If you feel your kitchen's a little bit bigger, then put 30 items in your kitchen. If you feel you're just a tea garden, put 15 in there. But make sure what you put in is quality. Quality that comes out, that's made with love and care. So you've let go of your staff. You've cut down your menu. You've now gone and you're doing your first night service. And usually what happens is first night service starts well because everyone's excited. New menu, everyone's in charge. I've taken charge of my life and I've taken charge of my kitchen and it is clean. Everything's fresh and it's great and the tickets are coming in and they're going out and it's clean and it's good and people are happy with the food. And, uh, and all of a sudden I start losing control and the tickets aren't doing so well and somebody gets a raw plate and they send it back and I can't get this done. And, and then I need to, what does Gordon Ramsay say? Stop. He says, stop. Think about it. I'm seeing all the, the, the comments, and I'll, I'll put them up now as well. Gordon Ramsay says, stop. Whoa. Hang on. Think about what you're doing. Reset. Take a look. Gain control. And that's what happens in our lives. We like wake up in the morning. Everything's fresh. I'm going to get this done. And next thing, the first thing, you, you've crossed your line. And you're like, Bah! And then you start beating yourself up. So you run guilty for the rest of the day. And then you can't get anything. To, and, 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 and You know what? Stop. Grab it. Okay. I had an oops. Let's pick the cart up. Let's move forward. And usually what happens is when he said stop, he said, whoa, let's gain control. Let's regroup. Let's communicate. Let's talk to someone. Let's say something. Talk to yourself if you need to. Say something. Listen to what's happening. Whoa, let's put life back together. Let's put it back on the tracks again. And next thing, even though there was a speed bump in dinner service, all of a sudden the plates are going out and we're down to the final ticket. And what happens in the end? He calls everyone out and he goes, well done, everybody. He celebrates and recognizes the achievements. Even with the small hiccups, even with maybe the loss of control, accept in your life that while you are busy trying to clean your kitchen, throw out your frozen food, um, change, let go of the wrong staff or people in your mind, in your head or around you, make sure that you celebrate the small successes. You know, I had a friend said to me, oh, you know what, I... I've tried to 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 work as a Christian this week. I've tried to be such a good Christian, but I just can't seem to get anything right. I said, well, what did you do? He said, yes, you know what? I did this, 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 and this wrong. I said, okay. And the previous week, yeah, no, the previous week was an absolute hash. I said, so what did you do right? No, well, I got this right, and I got that right, and I got that right, and I got that right. I said, well... Well done. Well done. Celebration. Why? I said, because first of all, last week you didn't care what you got wrong. This week you cared what you got wrong. And thirdly, you got a whole lot of stuff right. So you start celebrating what you got right in your kitchen as well. Except even with hiccups. Remember, none of us are perfect, but we've gone through it. Celebrate. And then leave yourself with a promise. He always leaves with a promise that you will <coughs> stay changed. I promise to stay changed. That is so important. Promise yourself, I will stay changed. I will keep working as I have put it down. Put it down on pen and paper. Success remains with those who accept, implement, embrace the new change. And even when there are a few uh, speed bumps in the road, you still celebrate them and you carry on. So number one, let's go in. Number two, taste the food. Number three, check the attitude. Four, check the cleanliness. Five, throw out the old frozen stuff. Six, 
redo that, that restaurant. Let it look better. Bring it up to times. Seven, look at, okay, first of all, you look at the willingness to change before you do the restaurant over because it doesn't help you do the restaurant over if you're not willing to change. Then you redo the restaurant. Then you make sure that the owner, who is you, is in charge of the restaurant. How are you treating people? How are you treating yourself? And how are you treating your customers? And then you have to sometimes let people go. Not always. Not always. So don't like defriend people all of a sudden. The next thing, Facebook's crashing because people are being defriended. Accept that your first launch will provide some hiccups. Stop and regroup yourself. Carry on. Celebrate and recognize your achievements, even if they are small. Leave yourself with a promise to stay changed. I can guarantee you, you will have success. I've gone a little bit further than what I want to. Where did I go? Uh, yeah, I'm looking at some things. Buzzy and Cam are having a good time there. We should appreciate waking up. Yeah, we should appreciate waking up every day with our breath. We can make it that day. But it's up to us. It's up to nobody else. I have to tell myself that so many, so many times. But I've been watching these kitchen nightmares. And this thing just clicked in my head. If it comes in and you taste your food, and you know you've got to change it. Be honest about it. Tell the owner who's yourself. This is your food that you've got to change. Check the cleanliness of your kitchen. Throw out the frozen stuff. Get a commitment to change. Redo your... Uh, restaurant. Sometimes you've got to make sure that you're in charge. Let go of a few people and promise to stay changed and accept the fact that your first night's launch is not going to be perfect. Something else that's important, Buzzy says, Andre, we need to be kind to ourselves. Listen to our bodies. I'm now in the process of reversing my time. Well done. That is absolute fantastic news, Buzzy. I'm in the process of reversing. I'm actually in the process of going goosebumps. When I, when, I, when I read things like that. If only you could see the hair standing up on my head. Type 2. That, that is, I am goosebumps to the side of my hair. That is really well done. So blessed. I'm so blessed to have such wonderful people help me. I have seen the wonderful people that you have around you and, and, and people in that. And, and it's really great. And, and I'm pleased. You know what? It's one of the things that I do on my tuk-tuk to work. And some days it's difficult because you feel the day is not as great as what it should be. And, uh, yeah, if you listen to Pastor Coral's uh, church service from last Sunday where he says, where is God? Then some days I'm feeling like that. Where is he? But it's, it's all in, in every day and every day's time and things like that. But, uh, Lynn, I, 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 yeah, Cameron says that's really awesome, Lynn, and, and, and I think it is fabulous, Lynn. I, I'm rooting for you and praying for you and holding in there for you. And trust me, I look for people to pray for on the way to work because sometimes the trip gets longer and then I realize I need to pray for more people. Uh, but I just figured if we can take a kitchen nightmare and do that visit inside of us, inside our hearts, inside our heads, chest, you know what? I'm not saying you have to be a believer. It does help. <laughs> I'm being biased, I know. But uh, what I'm saying is, just do that to yourself. Give yourself a kitchen nightmare Gordon Ramsay once over. Buddy, I don't think you'll be the same again. For the guys who have been watching live and been interactive, Cameron, uh, Pastor Carl, uh, Buzzy, uh, you guys, you know what? You lift me up tonight. Just, just being there has been, you know what? I, I went on this evening and I'm rushing and rushing and rushing. And they said, cancel it. It's your wife's birthday. And I'm going, I couldn't. I did it last week as well. And I have this like really brainwave thing that I've got to put out today. And um, I really thought I'm wasting my time. I'm, I'm probably going to be just preaching to an empty screen here tonight. And you know what? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all of you guys there. Pastor Carl, Buzzy, Cameron, everybody who's out there. Anyone that I haven't named or haven't seen in the comment, DVD. Uh, I'm trying to go through there. I've never actually had to scroll my comments before. I've had so many. But thank you so very much. If you want more live, let me know. I will definitely be letting you know when we are live. And I will definitely be contacting Pastor Carl. 
on uh, having a chat either the last Sunday or the first Sunday. Um, it will probably be nice if it's live because then you could actually throw a couple of live uh, 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 um, uh, live questions in and, and you could let people know. I'm hoping to at least give you a two-week notice on that one and not post a half an hour before and go, <laughs> woo live. So, yeah. But, guys, uh, shame. thank you very much, my beautiful wife. I, I don't know what I'd do without her uh, by my side. Once again... If you're running a kitchen with a spouse, remember, if you're a successful man, and I'm talking to the guys out there right now, you just have to look at the woman behind a successful man. Because no man is successful by himself. I'm sorry, I don't believe that. It is usually an immense driving force from a very loving, pushing, kind, and wholeheartedly uh, motivated woman behind him as well. And by yourself, well, that's a good kitchen to have as well. So, good stuff. From my side, I'm not going to keep you up any longer. I have yabbed enough. Okay, I have one more comment to push in there. Buzzy is... I would love to be on your channel, Buzzy. I would love to be on your channel. Drop me a mail, a message, or whatever. I hope I am at least... <laughs> you want this face on there? Re really? <laughs> anytime. Anytime at all. I would love to have a chat with you. So, uh, yeah, you just let me know and I will make it. Even if it is one o'clock in the morning, yeah, I will wake up and I will sit in my jammers or, as they say, my Zoom attire. Formal laptop, party on the bottom. <laughs> oh, and there is my beautiful wife saying thank you for the birthday wishes that you can see is in her. She's saying thank you very much. And she is also an avid watcher. Thank you for watching me, dearie. <laughs> and she helps me and motivates me so much through my echoes and that as well. It is absolutely, absolutely wonderful. Guys, please send the mails, drop messages, whatever, on anything that you would like uh, Pastor Carl and myself to actually chat about. If there's anything else you want me to talk about or anything like that, that uh, we could make it a regular monthly, uh, once every second month thing. There are many other ministers in Bethel Church that uh, uh, Carl has uh, that that they are different that have different specialities. So so please just throw them. Wow, the comments are coming through there. Cameron, happy birthday, Ina. Thank you very much. And of course, Buzzy has sent her message. She, Ina has seen that too. Thank you so much. But guys, tonight. You have my heart in my throat with everybody that has been here. I am I'm ever grateful to all of you out there. Thank you so very, very much. Keep, keep on believing. Get that kitchen clean. Take care of yourself. Be good. And if you can't be good, remember, always be kind. Cheers.